You you <laughs> did that after you'd already been operating thousands and thousands. No, of it's not true. It's not true. It's, it's always the same thing, yeah. Believe me. You know you. If if you operate thousands of thousands, you're gonna you're gonna get better in your mistakes. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhino Plastic Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. Season three, face-to-face -face interviews. And I'm delighted to finally, and not finally, a second time have Chairman Dogan on the show. Welcome. I'm so happy. You are welcome to my house. It's amazing, <laughs> guys. Look at where we are. I have never had such a setup. We are overlooking the skyline of Istanbul, penthouse suite. It is <laughs> why? Uh, yes. Mighty uh, so fantastic. Uh, yes. So yo man guys, it's it's so uh, where did I start? So Tio invited me to come to this course, which is we're gonna get to just now, but we last spoke about two years ago when we, we last had had a yeah, I think so. you, almost two years ago. And I have just thoroughly enjoyed being here for these last few days. So uh, uh, so many things I want to ask. Tell me about, like, what is it like doing these fellow courses? Because it's one of the things I see, you are so passionate, you're teaching. We've got guys from Guatemala, from Spain, from the Dominican Republic, from Prague. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't they just suck your energy from you? No, it's the opposite. It's, it gives me so much energy. Just, you know, but when I started, in the first couple of times, I was a little bit... Tense, if you like, I was a little bit like, if, can I can I really teach these guys what I want to show? It was difficult. Then you know I, you know I come to a state of mind that you know it's it's the most beautiful thing that I can do, and I feel so much full of energy when I when I have my fellows, and and I learn so much that I can't tell you. You know, it's not only the fellows, but I also learn so much from them. And you now, Tia, what's been so interesting for me is, like yesterday, we just sat listening to you explaining your philosophy for a whole day. And that doesn't happen often. And a couple of the things that stood out for me was that with my kind of closed mind of, in a way, coming to this course and thinking, how can a guy say it's only 20 steps to rhinoplast? And yet getting there and understanding how the two things that stood out for me, the one was that you, you adapt even though there's that path that you, you, you are advising us with, even in the, in the OR today, we saw how you were changing a few things. That was the one thing. And the other thing that really stuck out to me is how there's like a, a mental quietness that comes upon you when you operate, that you get into the zone. So, so explain maybe that second thing first. How do you get yourself mentally where you just like, it just it flows, that operation's flowing. I think this is the most important point. Is like, like, we, the surgeon ego is something good, yeah. okay? But you know, if, if you want to control everything during surgery, that problem starts just because of your ego. You, 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 have, to, you have to be limit, you know, let the operation, the rhinoplasty operation especially, not. I'm not talking about a heart surgery, but yeah, yeah. rhinoplasty operation, you have to let it, let it go flow by itself. Yeah, yeah. It will show you what, what's going to happen. Yeah. But everything starts with the step one. Step one, I put everything in place and I want to see the most beautiful shape that I'm going to end up with my fingers. Yeah, with your fingers, that's, that's kind of weird to think. Yes, Cameron, think about like, I give you some superpowers and yeah. I tell you, Cameron, look, you're going to have this patient. Yeah, she's sleeping and you sit and you're going to do something with your fingers and this is going to stay like this and this is going to be your yeah. result after surgery. Yeah. And I'm sure you're going to do exactly the same thing that I'm, I'm going to do. You're going to do this, you're going to say, Theo, I want this. I yeah. Say, okay. So my technique, what I do is I'm trying to do this, put it in my mind. And then I will do the, exactly the same thing with my sutures, grafts, osteotomies. You know, you understand, but the, yes. this is the philosophy behind. No, 100%. And you've just published this incredible paper in PRS, 
about minimalistic yes. rhinoplasty. But Tio, to I mean, you're a master. You've been around the block. You've been experienced. You've been operating since the early 2000s. The step of coming from what I feel I want to get to and actually getting there is what's hard. And I think what's amazing is how you are trying to make that more simple for surgeons. But they mustn't ever underestimate that it's easy to get there. I mean, these are, you are making a super difficult operation, trying to make it easy, but it's still very hard to get those results. Uh, believe me not. Everybody thinks that this is the, you know, the golden fingers of the surgeon that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. This is not true. This is the technique. This is, okay. this is the, really the steps that you're going to follow. If you do something wrong, you can have any finger, golden finger you have, you're not going to have a good result. This is the technique. This is not the, really the surgeon's uh, expertise or whatever. Of course, it's important. It's going to make a small difference. Yes. But the most important is not the surgeon, it's the technique. Okay. This is very important that, that we understand this. If, if you go in a wrong way, no matter what you do, you are not going to be, you are not going to get good results in all cases. You can get good results in some cases, but not all cases. And it's going to take hours. Your face is going to swell. You're going to have some complications, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I, I had all this stuff for over years and years. Yeah. You know, I learned everything by tears and sweats yeah. and tears. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so difficult, it's a so yeah. difficult yeah. journey. Yeah. But what, what I learned is, you know, the first time I saw a proper rhinoplasty, I said, okay, the result is good, but this should not be that complicated. It okay. should be much, it can be much more simple. I was very young. I yeah. was like 29, 30, so I don't yeah. Years ago, 25 years ago. I said, yeah, that should be much simpler. And it always was in my mind. And that's not come to like, you, you, in a way, almost like a crusader for Tiaranoplasty. And you, you've written a book, which you're busy with your second edition now. You're publishing papers. You're traveling and teaching a lot. Doing live surgery in Morocco next week. You run the fellowship programs. Just, it's fantastic, but you, if people can learn, there's lots of possibilities for them to learn. Yeah, I, I also try to use my Instagram account for, like, okay. I'm not going to say account, just, just for teaching. Like, people go there and they're going to have an idea of what I'm doing in my technique. But, you know, it's like rhinoplasty, all, all surgeries, but especially the rhinoplasty, it's like an open buffet. You have a plate, just a plate. Yeah. You can't take everything from the yeah. open buffet. You're gonna, you're gonna play. You're gonna take some some of this stuff and you're gonna eat it. Yeah. Everybody gonna take something from the from the open buffet. I understand. Uh, but you know what you choose means what technique you're gonna choose gonna make you a good surgeon or let's say more average surgeon. And also, depending on the ethnicity of the patient. Now, one of the things that kept on coming up over the last few days is that some of the guys are from Latin America. And the septal cartilage in most of the ethnic Latin American patients is very weak. So now, are we talking about the double tear stroke? Yeah. Yeah, some, some friend of mine, they call it taco. Yeah. I mean, there's always a solution. You are, we are surgeons. We're going we, we to have problems. I'm going to find a solution. Yeah. It's very technical and it's so easy. It, you know, my, my son is studying uh, engineering, and if I ask him, someone ask him, what would you do in this situation? He's, he's going to give me an answer immediately, yeah. you know, from his mind of uh, engineering. He'll say, do this and don't do this. It's very simple. Your cut is weak, yes, then do use two, two of them. That's so simple. I mean, we, we, sometimes we exaggerate what we are doing. Yeah. It's so simple. You can, of course, if this is weak, we're going to put one more. And if so weak, you don't have cartilage, then you're going to, you will go to the costa. Of course. And you're going to take something and you're going to make a reinforcement. But, you know, in Istanbul, the cartilages are good, so we don't need it. That's it. So, yeah, I want, to, I want to steer a little bit away from, like, the technical side of rhinoplasty because I think it's amazing what you do. I think it's amazing how you're teaching and, and we can all learn from it. But one of the things that I've been mulling over in this season on the podcast is, like, the surgeon's mental well-being. Like, because there's stress involved with operating on patients. And when things aren't perfect, it's even worse the stress. What are some of the things you'd like to guide listeners on with managing that aspect of rhinoplast? Oh, it's, maybe this is the most difficult part. Uh, yeah, I can't say I'm an expert on this, on, on this issue, but what, what you can do, you, you, the most important part is to choose the patient. 
Yeah, yeah. This is by far the most important part. You know, if you have dot, don't. It was a word from, I think, from Dr. Uh, Tebbets. Dot, don't. This yeah. is very important. Like, but you know, that, that was the same question in my group now, with my fellow groups. You know, you get older and the patients have more respect to you. Yeah. And they believe you more. This is, this is very true. But I was like, I, I had more friction with my patients. Now I'm getting older. They said, you know the best. Because, you know, they said, Dr. T is over 50 and now he's like, he, he knows, he must know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very yeah, yeah. important. Exactly. But aging is not good, but in this aspect, aging is very, very good. Yeah. You know? So I have a little more distance with my patients, so they, they respect me a little more, but still, you have to choose your patients. Very important. If you are, you have a little bit of doubt. And also, as a doctor, you must be careful. Like, if the patient has some issues with his body image, stuff like this, if you operate this guy, you're gonna cause more problems. Yeah. As a doctor, yeah. Not only protect ourselves, but you have to protect also the patients. Yeah. The patients may go very deep in, in their uh, depression, whatever, uh, psychological yeah. problems. Yeah. Just because we do something in their noise, and the noise is very, um, let's say, close to the psycho psychological center of the, of the human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I strongly believe this. For the patients and also for the surgeons. For the surgeons, gynecology is very important, very important. And uh, also for the patients, gynecology is more important than any other uh, aesthetic operations we do. I mean, we were speaking about it yesterday, how this, this, this attraction back thousands of years ago to the big, more powerful guy. Yes. She, she wants to have him as the mate, you know, because yes. they can have offspring. And I think this is, first thing you see is, you look at someone's eyes, but then the next thing is their nose. Well, I think it's quite complicated. My girlfriend, she's a psychologist, and we are talking lots of things about this. And she has an idea about this very strange idea, but I think she's right. She she's, she's told me, Till, do you know why you guys, you surgeons, are very interested in gynoplasty? You are not interested in ear surgery, otoplasty, or I don't know, breast surgery. Yeah. You know, if you go to a breast surgery meeting, you're gonna see a couple of guys. Come to a gynoplasty meeting, everybody is there, yes, yes, everybody yes. is very tense, listening and trying to do the, 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 the good surgery. You know why? Because he, she said there is something phallic on the tip of the noise. It goes very deep, he says. In you guys, yeah. in yeah. the surgeons, you are very attracted to this. And also the patients. The, this projection that you create on the yeah. noise will be something very important for the surgeons and also for the patients. That's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. So does that have anything to do with this rhinoceros yeah, yeah, this on is, the table? Yeah, this, this, uh, actually, <laughs> I love this. Uh, uh, this is a present from uh, Cam Cameron, and he, he this is from the South Africa, and this is beautiful. I mean, look, look at it. This is tear stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with a mini like chair yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, this animal is beautiful. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, rhinos, this is what... Um, People cut their hands off. Eh? It's tragic. It's incredible. It's like it's beautiful. Animals. Yeah. Um, to your, your team, eh? Like we know you on social media as you, but you've got an incredible support team. Yeah, you in saw the that today. And in the oh, yeah, you saw that today. Yeah. It's it's great to see, and I mean they're very loyal to you, and they obviously love what they're doing. Um, how's that been for you? Yeah, it's very important for me. You know, I can say without my team, I'm nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really a teamwork that we, we do everything together and it's so important for me. Uh, also so important for them, like Oskar, I'm working with him, like, I don't know, 18 years something. He was a teenager with pimples on the yeah, face yeah, yeah. When, he, when he started. And see that, you didn't see, you see, yeah, I yeah. saw her. She, she's with me for 20 years. Wow. Meltdown, five years. Uh, Target, like, now is three years. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so nice, she's almost like two, more than two years now. And, and my team now is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it's, it's like, uh, and Barkai, you've been today with, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, took, it took it's like two years. Wow. Th these are all my team and they're gonna help me in all aspects. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna follow the, our job. Not, not myself, the, the, they're gonna be in, in the job that we are doing. So you have two more things I wanna chat to you about. The one is papers. Tell the listeners a little bit about what you've recently published 
and what you have in the pipeline. Yeah, I, but what I published, it was uh, my first publication, actually, not mine, it was published in Perez, my book. Yes. Yeah. Perez, book, uh, Perez put my book, like, the, like a new book, and, and they, they gave a little bit of you know, explanation of what, what it is. And uh, then Dr. Gori told me, Theo, you, you are lazy, and I want to see the paper in three weeks on my table. <laughs> I said, okay, all right. <laughs> it, he was serious. He said, wow. Theo, you know, Perez, your paper, I want to see it. And, you know, I sent it in three weeks, but, you know, it was already written because it was the parts of the book. I just put it on the... Yeah. Um, on, 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 on the stuff that the most the most difficult part for in, in publishing is putting it on on the internet on the on the, on yeah, the computer yeah, stuff yeah. you know it's all it whatever is so crazy no, difficult it is eh? I don't know why but you know come on let's guys let's make this all it little bit no it's not hundred percent now oh. how do people get hold of your book uh no no they can't it's finished uh it's sold out it's finished uh, but it's but I, I'm, I'm writing right now my my book I I think. My work is going to be done in this weekend. I'm going to be done with all this stuff. Yeah. And then my team, they're going to put all the videos and photos and everything. And it's going to be a little bit bigger, but it's like a second edition is going to be the same thing, a little bit larger. And there are many things that um, I changed. Yeah, yeah. new. And I'm going to, of course, they, they, I'm going to put in the book. That's cool. I'm it's going to be a little bit bigger. And yeah. I hope to publish it this year, be, before the end of 23. And then, okay, last thing I want to chat about. If I'm correct, your kind of initial training for your first, say, like 10, 15 years or so was open structural type of approach to rhinoplasty. Then you had this like epiphany of going to visit Eves and he had such a big influence on your career and changing techniques and that you predominantly, I'm not putting you in a box here, predominantly are doing high strip uh, yeah. approaches to preservation yeah. rhinoplasty. Um, so the two things I want to ask about that is, What's that journey been like for you, this like evolution in your rhinoplasty space? But then the second one is where do you think this is going to continue towards? Look, uh, yeah, I started open for sure. But, you know, when I was in the university, my professor, Dr. Ayhan Umanoli, he, he, he was very good. He was the, maybe the best rhinoplasty surgeon in Turkey yeah. at this time. He was very, 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 I mean, proper surgery. But, you know, the, I'm talking about the 80s, yeah. uh, beginning of 90s. And so he, he was doing this very, uh, let's say, for this time, old school surgery. Like yeah. taking the hump, doing the osteotomies, and, you know, shaping a little bit of the tip. And yeah. no sutures. We didn't know that. Nobody knew the sutures on, on the tip these days. But he always did a very proper surgery. And he was very good in septum, he was taking the septum out, think, doing things like that. So the first thing I learned was closed. Then when I started my private practice, then the open rhinoplasty became very popular. Then I, then I switched to open rhinoplasty with grafts, suture tip sutures and stuff like this. But over time, I understood that the, the real correct way of doing this is minimalism. Okay. We have to be, do we, we have to be very minimalist. Yes. In grass, in sutures, yeah, in, yeah. in open yeah. close approach, yeah. and everything. And if, if I do less, the result is going to be much better. But, but I want to interrupt you there. The other thing that absolutely I found amazing is in your like, philosophy chatting about rhinoplasty yesterday, you said there's so much about releasing tension in the nose. Yes. And that is so interesting. Yeah, yeah I think it's very important. I think most of the uh, deformities that we see uh, during surgery comes from some uh, tension yes. uh, on the tissues. And there are two ways of correcting this. It, let's say, let, let's talk, let's be more proper. Like, let's talk about the tension. Let's, let's talk about uh, the uh, deviation on the, on the septum. Yes, the septum is deviated. There are two ways of doing this. In my opinion, there's a tension on it because the septum is too big. So you have to cut some part and it's going to relax and it's going to stay straight. Yes. Or you can make the septum straight by putting some grass. Yes. There's a tension on the septum, then you're going to add more tension on the septum, but yeah. more tension yeah. and it's going to get straight. Yeah, but it's using the opposite with the grow. Yes. It's just more kind of the old school. Yes, old school. Yeah. Well, well, it's old school. Still, many people are uh, yeah. using this. 
This is also possible that you can make it straight with yeah. more force. You know, there is a force here, you, you're gonna put more yes. than, than the, the, your more force is going to be the dominant force and it's going to be stable. But it's so much tension. Or you can understand why the septum is curved yeah. and you, you're gonna make a release and the septum will be happy to, be to stay in the midline. Okay. And then you don't have to make any, any uh, fixation, nothing. Okay, so now, so this is the thing that I find so interesting. Listening to so many people around the world talking and the meetings and stuff, they say preservation is really hard, which it is, but, so they say, no, you must first learn structure, then you learn preservation. What do you think about that? Because if you can learn how to do it from the start, do you necessarily have to have structural techniques? Yeah, but you know, all, all this terminology is a little bit sometimes confusing. Yeah. What exactly do we mean by structural? If you mean like hop removal and reconstruction of the dorsum, I think you don't have to learn it. It's, you know, you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know I, I learned uh, this preser dorsal preservation from Yves Saban, yes. but all form. You know, he said, I want to come, he said, don't come. What? He said, Theo, tap more. Really? What? Osteotomy, tap more. <laughs> you know, it's not going to work. He said, tap more. And yeah. it will work. Don't worry, yeah. you will do it. You will, you will do it. Uh, second thing, the superative area lost. Yeah. Don't come, he said. Do it. He said, thank you. I, I did it, it worked. You know, this, uh, this is very important. Yeah, yeah, but remember, you, you <laughs> did that after you'd already been operating thousands and thousands no, of times. No, it's moments. not true. It's not true. It's, it's always the same thing, yeah. Believe me. You know, you, if, if you operate thousands of thousands, you're going you're gonna to get better in your mistakes. You know... I love that. Yes. So if you're at operate thousands, you're going to get better with your mistakes. Mistakes. You're going to be the best in your mistakes. <laughs> this, this is very important. This, this is what, what I learned from my, uh, yeah, yeah. From my coach of windsurfing. He said, don't practice your mistakes. Yes. Because the, the, the worst thing you can do, you're going to get better in your mistakes. And nobody will, can take you out. You're going to be good in your mistake. But the same mistake is always a mistake. That's fascinating. Yes, that's very important. We must, the, the, the technique is everything. Yeah. We must follow the right way, then we can reach some, some places. Otherwise, you know, you, you, can, you can take a wrong way, but you can be very good in your wrong way, but there's a limit that you can be. It's going to get harder and harder and harder and harder, because it's wrong. Yeah. For, the, for the preservation, dorsal preservation, not preservation without rhinoplasty work doesn't mean anything to me. Dorsal preservation, like I learned from Dr. Yves Salam, is some, it was something that I always said in my mind when I started. I said, why are we removing the hump? Let's keep it and let's push it down. Yeah. But I didn't know how to do it. I told this many times to Barish. I said, Barish, look, we are dealing with this and we should push it down. He said, oh, it's good. Look at my you know, uh, graphs here. I forgot what he's a very special graph, very nice. He's doing a great job. But it's difficult. I mean, I was always said, why? why by uh, excision and then reconstruction. Like, you know, yeah. I can't understand this. Uh, Eve told me, you know, the, the, the right way of doing this is, I, I'm really grateful to him. Yeah. It's very important that somebody s says this. And I have another friend, Hussein uh, Gunnar in Istanbul. He was doing the same thing for over years. He also helped me a lot. He came to my operating room. He said, Theo, do this, and don't do this, and don't do this. He has a huge experience. He's a very good surgeon. I also learned a lot from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Guys, <laughs> I, I hope you've had a little, tiny little taste of what it's like to hang out with Tio. It's amazing. If you're listening to this podcast, you're watching it on YouTube, make sure that you yeah, just connect with this man. He's, he's inspiring. He is changing the world one Tio strut at a time. It's, Thank you so it's much. It's a great day. Tia, thanks so much. It's just fascinating to chat. You yes. can chat for hours, yeah. man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, man. Guys, thank you so yeah. much for uh, tuning in to listen and come back again next week for another episode of the Rhino Plaster Podcast whilst the two of us just enjoy the last of our sundowners here in Istanbul. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>